As a little bonus, um, here's another really fun example of standing waves that you don't normally talk about very much. Um, and that is tidal resonance. And I briefly mentioned it in the context of um, resonance frequencies, though really this should be part of the topic of standing waves, but it's called tidal resonance. So here's the picture. A little ocean town here, um, and this is where the ocean starts. Now, in many places, what you got is, if you look at like, a map of the... Um, the ocean floor, that's what's called a continental shelf, which is, is a fairly long, sort of wide section of, of ocean where it's not very deep. Now I'm going to pick my continental shelf to have a depth of about 90 meters. Of course, realistically, you know, it varies a bit, it depends on where you are, but you know, it's, it's a good enough estimate. The numbers vary. And then at some point, there comes this drop off, it's the edge of the continental shelf. And the ocean here gets really deep, 1,000 meters, 3,000 meters, 6,000 meters, like deep down. Right? Now, why are they continental shelves? Okay, different question. Um, take a geology course. So, here's what happens. There are many different waves in the ocean. A lot of them are small, you see them come in. But there are also much larger waves, and um, one particular type is, is, is called a long wave and that is the I guess the technical term for it now the speed of those waves is to some approximation given by the square root of g times the depth okay, this is this is all very rough right but it'll, it'll create the right picture now, one such long wave is really the tides. So the tides come in and out every 12 hours and 25 minutes. Right? The period of the tide is 12 hours, 25 minutes, which you knew, right? Right? Okay. Um, you know how tides form. You know there are two tides today, right? Okay. Um, so anyway, there are these, these long waves, and the tides are one of them. Okay. So... That's their speed. In our case, we with 90 meters, the speed v um, on the continental shelf would be g, which is 10 um, meters per second squared, times the depth, which is 90 meters. Take the square root. Um, square root of 900 is 30 meters per second. Right? Now those waves, they're not they're not visible. They are they're way too long. Um, called long waves, and they're, they're thousands of kilometers long, um, so you can't see them. You can see them over time as the ocean rises and falls. So, 30 meters per second. Now, over here, where it gets deep, the speed will be very different. So here, um, the speed is, is a lot greater. Right, so if it, the depth were 1,000 meters, then it would be 100 meters per second. The depth is 4,000 meters, would be 200 meters per second. So a lot deeper here than here. So um, the wave speed here is a lot faster than there. So that means roughly here, where the continental shelf drops off, right, there's a boundary where the wave speed changes. Now, whenever the wave speed changes, that means we get a reflection. We get a reflection of waves. If a wave travels along here, it doesn't matter how long it is, whether it's visible or not, when it reaches that point here, it's going to reflect. Of course, there are lots of other factors involved, right, that make this more complicated. Like it's a gradual fall off. There are other waves, all sorts of things, right. Uh, but for those so called long waves, including the tides, there is an essentially an open end here, as if this were some kind of pipe. Right? And a closed end here because there's the land. Wave can't go through, wave has to reflect. Alright. So that implies we can form standing waves. Now the period um, T is as I said about 12 hours and 25 minutes. By 12 hours, sort of half a day, except the moon keeps moving around the Earth, so 
you have to like you have to like essentially catch up a bit, I suppose. Um, so what is that? That is roughly speaking, going to be very rough here, about forty-five thousand seconds. Right, so this is a period of the the long waves caused by um, the gravity, the tidal forces due to the moon's gravity. So let's see what wavelength would then form um, would would then form standing waves. So right, lambda naught. So or lambda, it's just called lambda. The wavelength right would be v over f, um, which I guess in this case we've got a period. I'm going to write v times t. Um, let's work this out. I'm going to plug in 30. I'm going to plug in 45,000. That comes to, I think, 1,350,000 meters or 1,350 kilometers. And that's the length of one of those waves in this case. All right. So how long would the continental shelf have to be to allow for um, for the creation of standing waves. Well, the fun the fundamental for a closed open tube or closed open um, interval along which a wave travels is is given by the wavelength um, divided by four. All right. So this is the relationship between the fundamental and um, so we given you figured out a wavelength, right? If this is my wavelength, those the waves exist, then under what condition are do they form the fundamental of this um of this this shelf, right? So let this is let this be L here. Well, I'm gonna divide this by four. Um we're gonna get well technically it's three hundred and thirty seven point five kilometers. But let's be honest, we made a whole bunch of approximations. So, um, you know, maybe say 330 to 350 kilometers. Something like that. Depending on the, is it 90 or 89, right? We did some rounding. That is a fairly realistic value for the length of a continental shelf. Now, of course, some shells might be a bit too deep compared to their length. Some of them might be too shallow compared to the length from standing waves. So the conditions have to be just right. But if they're right, you get standing waves for the tides. The incoming tides get reflected in such a way that it builds up with the existing tide. And then you're going to get bigger tides, right? So, so places in the world where the tides are particularly big and famous ones are um, the Bristol Channel, for example, in the west of England, um, the um, Bay of Fundy near Nova Scotia, um, off the eastern Canadian coast, right? They're known to have really high tides. Why does that happen? Well, because the conditions line up just right. That the depth of the continental the depth of the sea, where the continental shelf is, that determines the speed, matches the length in such a way that the resulting um, standing wave, this essentially forms a standing wave, right? The fundamental usually. Um, the, the, the higher harmonies would require, the higher um, the harmonics would require a, you know, different values here, like, you know, you can work it out, like 3 lambda over 4 and so on. So we get different values. Maybe that happens sometimes too. But I mean, it turns out that those values, you know, they sort of they sort of match. They happen to just match. You get these effects in some places um, of the world. And if you're now sitting there guilty of of not knowing how tides actually form, or you've been told some sort of story that's half only a half truth, which seems to be fairly common, um, then then go look it up and and look it up properly. All right, thanks for watching.